the KLM Jumbo swept out of the mist at more than 150 miles an hour and smashed into the Panama craft straddling the runway. The fog came in. The visibility was uh, just about nil, and the captain was taxiing the airplane only about three knots because that was as fast as he felt like it was safe to go. The Panama craft was given permission to leave the stand and to head down the taxiway to a takeoff point. Now, the Pan Am pilot says that he was told to proceed down the main runway and to leave the main runway and back onto the taxiway at the next junction. He was never able to do that because that was the point of impact. We looked up and saw him coming down the runway at us. I saw his landing lights shaking, and that's how I knew he was moving. I could not believe that man was taking off. I started yelling to get off the runway, and the captain started turning the airplane. I looked back out of my right side window and saw him lifted off the runway. So I closed my eyes and ducked and uh, basically said a real short prayer about I hope he misses us. When he hit us, all it was was a very short bump, like boom. No big noise, no big shaking. I thought, thank God he missed us. Then I looked up for the fire control handles, and that's when I first noticed that the top of the airplane was gone. So I jumped to the ground, which it was 48 feet from the cockpit floor to the ground. And I thank the Lord I uh, hit on some grass There were about 50 people that had already gotten out on the left wing of the airplane. And I started yelling at them to jump off. And one poor lady, she jumped first, and everybody else jumped right on her and broke her back and both legs and both arms. After we'd been out there probably five minutes, the center fuel tank blew up, and it sent a flame probably 250 feet in the air. And then the airplane just fell apart. We only had like 65 that got out of our plane altogether. The KLM plane burst into flames and carried on down the runway, disintegrating as it went until the main piece of the fuselage came to rest more than half a mile away from the point of impact. No one that survived the KLM crash. I always, from day one, believed that it was the KLM captain's fault for taking off without a clearance. He just disregarded all cockpit procedure when he decided to make the takeoff. No one will ever know why he got in such a big hurry and uh, took off the way he did. Thank you.